Hello and welcome to KCP Community Meeting March 22nd, 2022. Um, we have a pretty packed agenda, so we'll get started. Uh, as always, we're going to put the GitHub issues since last week. That'll be our uh, space filler for the end of the time. Uh, Stefan, do you want to go first with the work Workspace UX proposal? Yeah, I will show that. There's a proposal, so there's a document. Take a look offline. I will try to show it live. Oh, sure. I will stop presenting. All right, you should see a terminal. Yep. OK, so I have this branch. Um, it's it's live, so it's, it's uh, implemented mostly. Um, basically, this current thing is gone. Just if you call KCP workspace, you see where you are. Um, what is added is that you can walk around those hierarchical um, workspaces. So this is what we had before, nothing else. But what you can do now is the following. You can um, create a workspace called uh, KCP team. And this is a team workspace. And you can enter that. So just KCP team is not ready. OK, so this is a demo gods, probably. This just doesn't work. It's initializing. I don't know why. Maybe something broke. But what you, what you are seeing here is that this is not a universal workspace. And inside of that, we can create even more workspaces. So um, technically, for cube, this is just a string. So our cube um, fork branch doesn't know about the semantics of that. Um, the KCP binary, like the, the KCP uh, plugin of kubeprepl knows about it. And some controllers know as well. I will show that in, in a second how this works. But you can basically have arbitrary um, hierarchies, levels here. So you can have tenant, organization, team, 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 and then universal, something like that, if you like. Um, in the proposal, it's also proposed to, to make it the CLI a bit simpler. It's just cosmetics, obviously. So you can, you can't, why can't you? Workspaces, I think, I hope. There we go. So you, you can just call that directly, and you can also say WS, uh, even shorter like that. Um, you can um, pass, absolute pass here. So you can say something like that, which you can't probably because it's not ready. Now it is ready. OK, so now we are in, in KCP team, and I can uh, finish what I just started. So I can have my app here. No, you can't get, oh, because uh, it's universal. No, something something is broken here, so I cannot finish that. Anyway, so the, the CLI is more like a, a shell now, so you can go back and forth in the hierarchy. It's a tree, um, so it's like a file system some people called it but it's of course uh, limited but we can we can do things which you can have in file systems as well like links for example could, could implement we can have a virtual workspace workspace objects in here so if you say get workspaces you would um no i got lost i think one second i have to go back i hope there we go. So we can have um, other kind of objects here. Everything which looks like a workspace, so it has a type and it has a URL, can become a workspace. It doesn't mean it has to be a cluster workspace. So it doesn't have to be like um, have a URL like that. It could be also something services, workspaces, personal, something like that, which we have already. So this is a CI site. Um, I said we can have arbitrary levels. So um, what is behind here, and this was actually the start of this work, people get our org names or cluster names actually wrong pretty often. They, so when you read code, sometimes um, it's wrong because the semantics is compli uh, complicated. What this PR changes, um, we go away from something which is just root, an org, or a workspace to something which is just a hierarchy of um, workspaces. So it's colon separated as before. 
but can have any length. And the API you see here is basically what you have in the file pass package of Golang. So you can go to the parent, you can split into the, the DNA name and the base name, you can get the base name, you can join something so you can make the pass longer. Um, and it's super uniform. Um, it's, it's not like before where um, orgs were root colon something, normal workspaces were something colon workspace name. So this was a non-uniform and uh, for that reason complicated. Now it's always the same. It's root colon, a number of segments which are organizations or teams. And at the end, there's a cluster workspace name. So this is uniform and um, I plumped it through in my branches um, everywhere, basically in Cube, in KCP. It's it's a new type called logical cluster. So I went away from cluster name, which is confusing because we have other clusters and for that reason also other cluster names. So now it's logical cluster um, everywhere. It's its own type. So um, compiler complains when you pass it as a string and it complains when you pass a string as a logical cluster. So you must be explicit. So when you go from logical cluster to a string, um, call string. Um, the other way around, you have to typecast. And um, this is a little tedious, but um, it protects you uh, to do mistakes. And we can trace very easily, especially in Cube, where we use, for example, a logical cluster as a string, or where we depend on that logical cluster is mapped to a path in the URL slash clusters string. So you can just use your Golang or VS Code completion to find those places in Cube and KCP. At the moment, I moved it into API machinery, so GitHub, uh, com, KCP, dev API machinery, for the reason that it's used inside of Cube and of KCP. Uh, I didn't dare to play with cyclic dependencies. I'm not sure if it even works in Go mode. Maybe it does. Um, for the moment, it's just here. Super simple package, just one virtual cluster here, uh, the file which you just have seen. Um, yeah, basically, that's it. Um, the conclusion from this, it was an experiment in the beginning, just to see um, how big the ripples are and um, whether it makes code easier. I think it does it, or it achieves what I hoped, that code is type safe, much more type safe than before. And you find places where things are wrong or certain dependencies, assumptions are taken. Um, and I think it's, Despite it's adding something like a hierarchy, but because it's so uniform, code gets simpler. And this is a striking argument, I think, to move this direction. Um, not because we want the feature. I mean, we get it as well, of course. We can have uh, arbitrary hierarchies, like we can model organizations and tenants and teams and so on. But the code, for the code, it's super important, I think. Yeah, so far. Um, can I ask a couple of stupid yeah. questions? Yes. Um, one is if all of these paths start with root, why bother writing the root? Uh, the other is can VS Code search for these typecasts? I thought not, and maybe you want to actually have a function instead that gets invoked. Yeah, 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 yeah. So for the last question, yes, I was thinking the same. So for the typecast, I don't think you can search even in Golang, uh, Goland. Um, so we could have a function, and then this is also possible. Yes, um, the root at the moment is always. In the beginning, um, simple reason, the, the path in the URL, it's, it's slash clusters. And imagine, um, I mean, where is the root cluster? So we could do something like cluster slash root as a special case, and cluster slash first level of org um, colon something for everything else. We could do that. Um, I have an idea how to do that, even type safe and hide all this detail from controllers and other code. Um, I would get or would like to get rid of the root because it's a little ugly, obviously. Um, well, what if we spell root with the colon? Yeah, this is also ugly. Yes, we could. Um, I have a different but idea. That's the, way, um, that's the way it works with, with the Linux Unix file names. I know. Root is, I know, is I know, slash. I know. I know. <laughs> um, just as a joke, somebody suggested uh, to use the backslash like DOS did. So, uh, <laughs> I get credits to DOS, and, but oh. backslash is not universally supported in URLs I read, so I'm sorry, it doesn't work. Uh, this looks so great. Like, this looks like such a uh, 
an improvement over I, I definitely love it when things that uh mean something are a type and not just a string that happens to be called logical cluster name or something that's definitely an improvement um, maybe a comment, and this goes back to, to my discussion with Maru yesterday and the day before, I think. Um, this enables arbitrary hierarchies, technically, in KCP core. It does not mean that a service building on KCP offers any or arbitrary hierarchies. So a service operator can define them. Everything that is done via cluster workspace types uh, and authorization. So um, there can be opinionated hierarchies for service and also for stock KCP. So we might have some setup like workspaces, maybe teams. That's what I have in my branch. Um, you cannot go further. Like there's just one team level at the moment. Technically, you could even less than recursively if you want. How is that validation enforced? Is that uh, like when I define a, a JSON type workspace, I also define the validation for that that says it can't yeah, be so under more than one? Whatever's um, currently um, the cluster workspace types they they are authorized like you have to have the use permission on them the verb use which and so the type must exist in a workspace so um, when an organization is created there's a controller adding universal and team as cluster workspace type objects if they are not there you cannot create sub workspaces so the controller controls what you can create plus authorization uh, limits it to certain holes or something like that. So this is how it's protected and forced. And if cool. you have a controller which adds a team to a team workspace, then you would have this recursive uh, structure. Gotcha. Cool. As far as the point about having a, instead of just having it be a typecast, uh, having a method that takes a string that creates the thing, if you go that route, that, that seems totally fine. But if you go that route, Sorry, go ahead. I want to I want to uh, hide the type string. Like yeah. you shouldn't be yeah, able yeah. to even access the, the string below, and then we have some exactly things. exactly yeah yeah because then there's two ways to do it, and then you can never find both ways. To do and it. we can we right. can you, you can do it right. You can put it in a struct with a private member. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then we can map root to clusters root for the path, and um, an organization would be a clusters organization name. Completely hidden from any consumer of the stock. Yeah, this seems like a real uh, uh, nice logical improvement for you know this kind of code that tends to get kind of mind bendy pretty fast. So nice work. Um, was there anything else you wanted to uh, present about the workspace UX proposal? I also the the um, CLI circles um, look awesome. Let me let me maybe open the doc, or you can open it if you want. Sure. To present it. Oh, also a feature request. If we have a uh, file system like semantics, can we do the dash to go back to your previous? It's implemented. Dash oh, man. Mine, uh, oh, man. dot dot is implemented. Love it. Basically everything here. And the thing is, it's if you look look for the code, it's it's getting easier that way. So that's yeah. the impressive thing. So um I mean dash we had before, I think even David did that. Oh nice. Okay, so if you can can go down, yeah. let me just see whether there's anything further, further, further where the examples are. There are some questions about oh. for example pretty names. Maybe we don't need them anymore if we have team workspaces because name conflicts are not a problem. That's one thought. Um, if you go further, yeah, um, I didn't highlight that in, uh, when showing, but you saw me saying get workspaces before you had this um, this KCP workspaces list command, which is gone. Uh, you can say if you're in, a, in an org workspace, like you say dot dot, you get into who default, for example. You say get workspaces inside of that. So there's nothing like this duality anymore that you go to services, something which is hidden by the plugin. No, everything is native now. So it's really slash clusters, root default, or root red hat, root whatever, um, where you get the workspaces. 
So this is nice. Um, we still have the virtual workspace behind, like there's a redirect to that, but it's embedded into the normal uh, URL. Yeah, that's important. Professor, okay. cube config names, that's not so important. Pretty names, as I said, we might get rid of them for simplicity. Symbolic links are super trivial to implement. We could do them in the CLI if we want to. Um, What's the use case for symlinks for this? Yeah, basically telling somebody, um, for example, you have a uh, you have a application team workspace, and then you want to link to something else, which is an absolute uh, redirect to something, and you can just use a CLI to jump over to the other side. Oh, I see. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that's it. Um. All right. Any uh any more questions about workspace UX? This looks very uh very ergonomic. I like it. Yeah. I'll plus one up. I think these changes are awesome. Um, yeah, Paul, did you want to talk about, uh, P3 stuff? Yeah, I, I want to talk a little bit about P3, but I think maybe more importantly is to start with, uh, maybe some of our continuous improvement pieces that we're working on. Some of the feedback from prototype two was that right at the end, we had a lot of cleanup we had to do. We had a, a lot of, uh, tasks that dragged on and we ended up with some feedback that the team started to fragment and we didn't collaborate as much in the end of P2, beginning of P3, because we were kind of moving different directions. And so I wanted to talk a little bit today or suggest that for closing of P3, we try and improve there by swarming to help what's left. Um, our prototypes are supposed to be useful chunks of work that we want to, to show to somebody. Uh, so it makes sense to, to make sure we finish them out. And if that means we, we take this week to do it, I'd like to propose that we go ahead and do that. So my, my first suggestion here is that we agree on what closed means for a prototype. And I'll just throw out there that, that for me, it means that one, we've, we've merged all the PRs that are tagged with that uh, a milestone. We've got our script in working mode and people have run through their feature and, and recorded just an individual demo for that feature. I'm not asking for like the big full, full script being recorded by one person, but uh, just what you've owned is demoable type of thing. So I guess I'll start there to, to see if there's any feedback on uh, either that method of collaborating more at the end of closing or on what closing actually means. I gotta say, I like the I like the idea that the demo is not, or that the the demo recording is not one mega monster demo recording of everything, because then it's hard for whoever does that, whoever manages that, to pull that together. Instead, like individual demo recordings seems like a real improvement for everyone's life. I don't know if other people agree or disagree. It sort of make, it makes a less uh, less splashy result. There's not one mega demo recording, but at least it's not you know very hard on the one person who assembles it together or the end people that assemble it together. And I think moreover, we enable other folks that may want to demo these things to create some big flashy demo if they'd yeah. like to. Um, well, if there, if there are no objections to that sort of strategy, I, I think there's a couple of things that we can focus on. Uh, first priority would be make sure that we're supporting the folks that are still owning P3 items if all of those are covered, then we can go through the open PRs. And if there's stuff that's nearly there, we can provide reviews on anything we may want to merge in the meantime. And last, if none of those exist, uh, we can work on any of the repo health items that we know may be coming up and are achievable in this remaining time frame. Uh, but, but really, I think most important to me is that then allows us to go into P4 as a team. And when we do those uh, directed design discussions, nobody needs to feel like they're left out because they're still doing cleanup on some P3 thing. Yeah. 
So in that case, if some, if we want to, I suppose the next thing we would do is go over uh, the items in the milestone. And I'd ask for folks that own items in the milestone still to help us understand where we stand with them, where we could use help and uh, see if folks are available. So do we wanna go through those? Or do we wanna wait and do more discussion first? I'm fine either way. I don't, I don't think anybody is, nobody seems to be jumping up and down to discuss. We can, <laughs> we can just go through it. Okay. Joaquim, how about you uh, walk us through this one? Where, where we stand and where can people help you? And so the functionality is, I mean, at least the PR that related to this issue, um, the functionality works. The PR is not merged yet. I'm addressing the comments um, um, and I'm trying to find out why some tests broke now, but, but it works at least. So if I can finish today, you know, all the, uh, all the required changes, it should be good. So in terms of support, just review support for you? Yeah, review, review. Okay. Yeah. All right, how about P cluster help checks? I didn't even start that. All right, so we need someone else to pick this up or we need to decide to move this to prototype four. Yeah. Is this one blocked on any off stuff? Because if it isn't, then it's then it's you know fairly easy for anybody to pick up and do. If it is, blocked, yeah, I, I think it's it's easy. Um, what's missing? What I saw, I think we need um, permissions, like a role to create the cluster workspace object and to update it. That's missing, I think, in the in the manifest. I started uh, that maybe I will push something for that. Okay. And somebody has to write, I mean, there are two pieces, create a cluster workspace from the sinker, plus um, having a controller doing whatever your PR expects, right? Touching something in the object. Do you mean a workload cluster from the sinker? What did I say? Yeah. You said workload uh, cluster. cluster workspace, but. No, no, I, I mean, okay. workload cluster. Of You're in workspace mindset. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think have... that if this is not blocked on any off, this is relatively straightforward. And it sounds like Stefan already has some work in I, progress I just that might do it. Into the, into the manifest. Uh, Maro links something. Gotcha. There we go. We have a PR. Oh, okay. And I mean, it's not like it's super complicated, but. Um, Andy had moved it to P4. And he did what? He moved that? It's in prototype four. It's currently. If that was intentional or not. That was, I think, not intentional. It, it's, it, so these controllers basically is a house check uh, touch controller, right? Or is it something else? It's just um, paying KCP to basically indicate that it's alive. And so the only thing they would have to change is um, like there's a lease controller and it, you know, there's the mechanism for de deciding that you have to actually indicate that you're alive. And now there needs to be a call to KCP to update the, the workspace, sorry, the, the workload cluster object as status. Yeah. And it's just a loop. It's, no, it's a controller, actually. Yeah. It's, it's a good start. I mean, the, somebody has yeah. to take it over and clean it up. And I can do it. I was I was just deferring it because it had been moved out of the milestone. OK, it sounds like we should move it back into the back into three. And Mara, you're going to uh, pick it back up. Sure. I'll move it into three and, well, I guess you'll have to open a new PR for it, but um, 
Yeah. Cool. Thank you, man. All right. API end user demo. That's all tracked in 417. Stefan. Yeah, the PR I posted in the Slack. It's ready, it's green. Um, there have been reviews of Andy's PR before by me and by Maru, I think. I addressed everything or I moved um, everything here into the follow ups at the bottom of the screen. There's a small list of things, but we don't need all of them now for the demo. But we shouldn't forget about them either. So, But this is a list. Everybody who wants to get into this area, picking up something of those four open items there makes sense. But as I said, not blocked. We're not blocking okay. for the demo. So you need approval for the P3 PR you have? For Basically that, yeah. The open Seven, items? 755. Okay, cool. And then the open items here, we can migrate to a new piece for, for P4. Yeah, some we might do quickly just after merging. Some we will postpone to P4 whenever we do that, yeah. Gotcha. All right, and we have the API author demo. That's the same, no? The same one. Double click that one. All right, we've got a server not ready. That one's a bug. Are we going to try and pull that one in? Yeah, it's it's fixed by seven. 55. Okay, so we need some review on that one then? No, no, it's just, it's part of the PR. Oh, okay. when we When we merge, this one is fixed. Gotcha. All right, and Jason, we've got the P cluster registration. Uh, yeah, so I, uh, I have a work in progress PR to do the cluster heartbeat controller side. The other side of the sinker updating the heartbeat uh, is that the cluster controller will mark the cluster as unready if it doesn't have a recent heartbeat. Um, so this is like very related to the uh, sinker setting the heartbeat issue we talked before. Um, we There was some issue with creating the workload cluster object from the sinker that sounded auth related. Uh, and so that was why my question for that before. But it sounds like so that the first two unchecked boxes create workload cluster and build sinker controller, those are both uh, under the other issue, under the other one we talked about before, uh, and Maru is going to pick up the lease controller to do that. And the heartbeat, uh, the cluster heartbeat controller is under review. Uh, and I think getting close, I think that uh, there's a, a, a somewhat overarching question of whether it's worth merging that without the other ones in there, because uh, it doesn't really do anything until something is setting the heartbeats for it to pay attention to. But we could talk about that uh, offline. And then the rest are stretch goal stuff I think we won't get to uh, in this in this milestone. I think it's fine to merge it as is. I, I, just because it's not going to be enabled, some of the um, longer term questions can probably just be deferred. Um, just to call out a, a couple of them, there was the question of how exactly the sinker and the controller are going to um, cooperate in terms of heartbeat interval and like the sinker needs to heartbeat at a certain interval, and then the controller, which is is global to KCP, um, has to determine where the interval is has passed. And without coordination, like like the controller in KCP can be configured to set an interval, but the problem is like how does the sinker know that? Um, so the sinker basically has to be able to. There has to be some coordination there that we're not doing yet. I'm not saying we have to do it in this PR, but I think that's an issue we'll have to tackle. Um, yeah, that that'll be an an integration question when the two, when whichever of the two PRs merges second, there will be some. That's when we have to answer the question of how they coordinate. I think yeah. for the short term, or for at least to to be able to check this box now, I think we could say, like, though there is a flag in the cluster controller that it that you can change the interval. We're going to assume it's a minute, say. Whatever, or whatever value, what some assumed value. And though you can change it in the sinker, we will assume it's some fraction of that. 
And we don't really, I think we don't normally expect operators or, or sinker installers to change those by default. Like you, you could, uh, if you want to heartbeat more often or less often for some reason, do people normally can like, do people normally change those configurations in their Kubernetes clusters with nodes today? I mean, it's a distributed system problem. It yeah. depends on the configuration of your cluster in terms of how reliably you can heartbeat at, at given intervals and, and basically like what laps indicates an actual problem will vary by cluster, I think. Yeah, I think we I think we also just won't know that until we've operated this system for a little while. So some value now is better than the perfect value for both sides. And then as we as we you know see this operating in, in real life, we can say, oh, a minute's way too short or a minute's way too long or or you know, heart beating every 10 seconds is way too often or something. Right. Yeah. Um, and the other the other issue that um, this work raised for me was the idea that the sinker is responsible for creating the workload cluster. I'm not entirely sure that makes sense. And maybe we should, I mean, maybe it does. I just, I don't see any rationale for why that's a good idea because I mean, the way cube works, if you can create one object, you can create many. If you can create it, you can probably do other things to it. So it's like, yeah. there's no, you, you can the ability to restrict access to a single resource in a given workspace. You can, you can, yes. You can. There's a resource name in all so yes. I, I guess my point is, like if we're giving access to the sinker to create that resource, it has to be a fixed name so that we can lock yeah. down the auth. Why aren't we just creating the workload object for it in the first place if we're doing the auth? Like we already know what the resource you, is supposed it, to be called. It doesn't help. It's no, it, no, it, it doesn't help because um, you have to update the object anyway. So you have yeah. to restrict the resource name in the role. So the work I get must that. Be done. My, my point is, why would well, we delegate that responsibility to the sinker if we already know what object we're already setting the auth up for the sinker? Just create I the think because, object while you're doing that. Because we skip one step for the user. That's the only reason. And if it, uh, it's unlikely, but if the workload cluster object was ever deleted, the sinker could recreate it and get back to work, as opposed to yeah. just yeah. Spin, it, it, it's know. not super. It's not super important. Uh, it's I think it's convenient, but um, it is a nice just, one less step for the user when they install or whatever system installs it for them. But I, I also don't have a strong opinion. If we find out there's any difficulty in doing that or any reason not to do it, we should undo it. I, I, for me, it's just if you have to do the auth, it doesn't seem like it's a step. To, like you're saying the user has to do it. If you're already setting up the auth for the user, you're basically halfway there. Anyway, yeah, you don't have to I mean, litigate. Ma would ch ch choose one, one of the two ways and just implement it. Doesn't matter. If we document to create object before and so how it only allows status update, not spec update, that's also fine. Sure. Okay. I think we've got ownership for everything. It sounds like we've got uh, uh, PR that needs some review help. And then as we mentioned before, if you're not helping with one of those, please run through and record a, a demo for your feature if it's ready. Otherwise, we've got this list of open PRs. We've got only 16 of them. So if there's items here that are nearly there and we can get into to P3 right now this week, let's go ahead and give them some reviews as well. And then we can move forward with the expectation that our, our design meetings can, can happen as a group next week. All right. Cool. I think that's all I had. Um, we can talk about P4 topics later if we want to, but, but maybe we should move on to some of the other topics first. Yeah, thanks. I think we will. Yeah, we'll come back to uh, P4. Let me present again, the present juggling. You see that? Are we seeing that? OK. Um, uh, Stefan, you're next with uh, API exports, bindings, resource schemas. Yeah, I don't Hopefully. want to demo that. Um, Any can do that next week, maybe. Uh, it, this will merge soonish, I hope. So if somebody approves, uh, maybe Maro takes a look, uh, final look. Um, just as a warning, so please play with it. Um, but there are still some constraints. Uh, one of them, the last one, is pretty 
crucial. So we wildcard wildcard informers. That's our way to go across workspace uh, for controllers at the moment, and they assume that the schema is the same in all workspaces. Which means if you have two workspaces and use API bindings with with the same GBRs but different schemas, everything will break down. So it's a constraint. Obviously, it's good enough for the demo, but obviously, it's a it's a time bomb issue. We have to fix soonish. CR deletion is not there. So the CRDs, I mean, everything is based on CRDs. They're, they are in some background system bound CRDs workspace. Um, the C CR deletion controller doesn't work, doesn't run on workspaces. So at the moment, nothing is deleted. Um, shall be prepared. And the last thing I have to read, oh yeah, um, absolute relative workspace reference. That's the only thing we have at the moment. So you, you, you give reference to another workspace, um, which has a API export. That's fine for, for, for development. It's fine for demo. Of course, eventually we want something like a catalog feature, or at least some primitive in the system, which allows an implementation of a catalog on top. This is not part of P3, obviously. Um, I had some sketches in my extended API PR, which is still open. Um, we should talk about that eventually. Um, maybe it's also something different team. Maybe OLM is interested in that. You could talk to them. Maybe there are people who want to join to do those things. At the moment, it's limited. Development work case, work case is really, use case is really the one which is implemented. It's not the final thing. All right, but other, other than that, play with it when it's merged. Cool. Uh, the next one I have down there, it, we've already talked about as far as the P3 status and topics, and, and even these things are uh, out of date. So uh, life moves fast. Ah, David, with a late breaking comment, you want to talk about Synker virtual workspaces? Um, if we have some minutes more, I can sure. showcase where I am uh, in the exploration for the Synchro Virtual Workspace. Uh, so mainly uh, the, the main idea is, is that it exposes one sub-server, so one API server, virtual API server on, on a subpath per workload cluster. And so each, each Synchro, in fact, would have its own URL. Uh, in where it would find precisely only the APIs and the resources it is uh, interested in. And the APIs that are exposed to uh, on this um, subpath uh, cluster are mainly uh, the all the APIs that are found in the negotiated API resources um, that are the result you know, of the negotiation when you add a new cluster, a new workload cluster. So in the future, of course, it would be based on API exports, but for now, it just takes the, the schemas that are in the negotiated API resource. And based on this, it exposes a number of, of APIs on each endpoint associated to each uh, sinker. And then all the requests that comes to, uh, into the, these um, endpoints, REST endpoints, are forwarded to the right KCP server. Uh, but you can add transformations to the request on the fly, typically, for each, um, you know, uh, sinker, each workload cluster, you would only get uh, the objects that have the uh, that have the cluster label set to this workload cluster. And also, you would want typically to to be able to change, in a number of cases, some fields of the spec or the status back. Um, uh, we have this, you know, requirement for ingresses, for example, and also for the deployment splitter typically. And so I started implementing this, this transforms as well. I can uh, just stop me if, if um, you have any question. I can showcase where, where I am, where I am currently. And you see my screen. Mm -hmm. uh, so here uh, I'm mainly just in the in the default um, in the demo, I do yes workspace current. I'm in the demo workspace in the default org, and I will just apply uh, the US US East one. Um, 
workload, workload cluster, sorry. And then if I typically try to access to the um, Sinker virtual workspace, which is here, uh, as you can see, we point to services, Sinker, the name of the of the work, uh, workload cluster, plus the, its, its logical cluster as well. And then <clears throat> I would try to do get deployments there. If I do that, of course, I don't have anything for now. And even if I do API resources, I don't see anything. And in fact, it's just because the negotiated API resource has not been published. So this type is still not uh, available in this logical cluster. But if I just publish the negotiated API resource and do the same, so in on my Sinker virtual workspace, API resources, you know, call, then I can see that I can get the deployments. Uh, so it has automatically been made available on this uh, Sinker virtual workspace because uh, the deployments API has been negotiated uh, and published in, in the corresponding virtual, in, in the corresponding workspace. And now if I apply a deployment, so here directly into KCP, into the demo uh, workspace, uh, let me show you the deployment I'm applying. That's this one. And it's especially I added, you, you, as you can see, the cluster label with the U, US East one. And also an annotation that, you know, showcase this transformation. Just um, a, a diff between what is the external view of, of the, the, the deployment the, and what should be seen by this sinker. Typically here in the case you have, um, um, you know, split deployments. One sinker would see a number of replicas. Another sinker uh, would see an, another number of replicas. So it's just an example, of course, you know, a bit dummy here. But I'm changing the replicas to 10. Uh, as you can see, the real replica number here in the spec is 3. But now if I do uh, get deployments here, I can see that in replicas here in the spec, I can 10, 10. And it's it's just replaced on the fly by this uh, transformation that is applied. So if I change that now to, let's say, 12, and apply it again, uh, then here I get, I get 12. Uh, I can also check the fact that if I remove this level here, then I would not get the, the deployment in the list. And also the watch is implemented. I mean, I tested that as uh, normally the watch should work as well. So I only get the events in a watch that are, you know, that match the various labels, uh, you know, selectors that you want to add in the transformation. And also in the watch events, you would get um, each, each, you know, event, uh, the object of each event would have been transformed also by the same transformations. Uh, so yes, it seems to me that this, I mean, this has to be reviewed and I have to create a pull request uh, still, but it seems to me at least that it set us quite the, the right tools to, to be able to, to do what we want. Yeah, this uh, is super cool. This is, this is awesome. Uh, will it, this won't require changes on the sinker side, except to point to this virtual workspace instead of the actual yeah. workspace, right? Yeah, in fact, not really, because uh, I mean, for now, if if I if I just add the label um, annotation um, mm. and the cluster label correctly, in what you see, because you still filter on this label on the client side. But it seems to me that it's more, you know, tools to go one step further and start uh, managing the placement annotation, uh, which uh, is envisioned to also enable splitting uh, workloads uh, across clusters, typically. So yeah, and even even with, with, with this type of mechanism. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, are sinkers able to update? So one thing we had talked about was having like if one physical cluster is auto scaling this deployment, it could mm -hmm. update its replicas and say, oh, I, I decided to add an eleventh replica down here and update that upstairs, uh, update that's that. It is a status, but it's in the spec. 
is that something that's supported by this or is that is that going to be more difficulty i mean that that that's accounting for a a somewhat uh, weird api quirk that this is in this in the status yeah in, in fact today i've been trying to explore uh, what type of transformations we can do and how to we had discussed the the, the idea that we would store you know location specific changes to the status in some annotation possibly so i started trying you know that precisely what i showed but then of course i mean i think that we have to to really think through the flow of you know the changes changes between the 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 sinker view uh, the location specific view and the public view of the object mm -hmm. i mean it seems to me that here we have to clearly define all the various you know use case and flows that that would be necessary so yeah, I guess I hadn't I hadn't even thought about aggregating the status of those of those physical mm. cluster. Like when the sinker says, you know, I'm ready, but the other one is not ready. How do we aggregate that to the to the main thing? But this this is so amazing. I I, I love this. This is great. Yeah, for now the transformations are quite you know completely generic. In fact, just you know you change the options of the request or or the input object and also update the output object. But it's you know you can just implement and change the transformation as you as you want so i assume that we would be able to to do quite a number of things with that yeah i like that it's that it's just a that it's just a json patch like per logical cluster or sorry per, per physical cluster uh, location you yeah i just... assume that, that there is some you know um reminiscence or some some concepts coming back from the two steps uh, thinking that that we we discussed about some month ago, but but now the difference here is that if you don't have any difference uh, between the external uh, view of an object KCP view and the location specific view, then you just have a, a an empty uh, diff, which is the, yeah. the big difference between the previews. Um, Sean had a, Sean had a comment. How are those generated? You mean the diffs? Yeah, the diffs. Yeah, that would be like the the deployment splitter controller would be responsible for saying, you know, though the original object said replicas 10, what I want you to do is change that to replicas three in US East one and replicas seven in US West one. It's some controller is responsible for applying those diffs or, or sorry, not applying them, specifying those diffs. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, these are the, the all the thing, things that we have to, you know, discuss and, and continue uh, brainstorming based on, on this you know, generic approach. Seems okay, that makes sense. Thanks. Um, cool. Any more any more questions about the virtual workspace? Is that uh, David, is that something you are targeting for? Prototype four time frame. Or? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, I think so. Great. And by the way, um, all, all the API related stuff. You know, the 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 idea that based on some schema that you find in a negotiated API resource or in an API export, then you expose at a at a given set path all the APIs. Uh, this is something that would probably be shared uh, or useful for the API exports virtual workspace as well. Because the the the, the underlying uh, mechanics is is quite the same, sort of CRD based uh, dynamic REST storage. So I assume that we could share part um, much of those of this code also for the API exports upcoming virtual workspace. Cool. Um, we have about ten minutes left, and I can go through the. Um, Unless we, did we have any other items? I don't remember if, if there were other things we put off to later, but we can go through issues um, with no milestones since the last, um, since the last meeting. Um, support scheduling workloads to multiple clusters. This is uh, definitely something we want. I think probably this is a, a question I just need to go back and answer. Um, but that's that's definitely all on our radar. Um, mainly just a question. You are here in the March twenty second meeting. Um, get rid of X Kubernetes cluster and use clusters L cluster. Is that like a, a code hygiene nice to have 
Uh, I, I have to talk to Steve. I guess Steve has some opinions. Uh, if we can, we should only have one way to access a cluster, a logical cluster. I think we have two at the moment. Yeah, why do we have two? Is Steve here to defend himself? My hope is just historic reasons. Yeah, yeah, it, it was, I mean, the the fact that we had several ways to represent that is, is very old, even from the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm curious about his reason for wanting it, but in general, anything that simplifies server handling code is probably good. So I heard from, from David now it's predating Steve even, so. Yeah, it anyway, may predate, it, it may pre predate David and me. <laughs> we will talk about it. Uh, oh yeah, and he has a heart on that on that <laughs> issue, so he may actually be pro it uh, as opposed to anti. Um, this was the time bomb you talked about uh, earlier, right? It's another one, <laughs> a different one. Oh, okay. It's a different one, basically. So GVRs and I mean API bindings implement or are implemented through CADs in the background, but you can of course CADs in the same workspace. And um, there's no admission or anything like that to stop you from doing that. Uh, the API binding has priority, so this will be offered by, by, uh, by the server, basically. But the CID is still there, and you don't get any feedback as a user. So this is something, if somebody wants to dive into admission and also into API bindings and this stuff, this is a good item. And it's a bomb, so it's, it's important. Is this... Uh... Is this the fact that I can create a CRD called API bindings in the right GVR that that No, I mean the way we do that with CRDs is basically by the name. The name of a CRD is um, resource name dot group name. Mm -hmm. So just the name makes sure that you have no overlaps in CRDs. But now we have two types, like we have API bindings yeah. and CRDs. So that this mm -hmm. this CD uh, um, conflict doesn't appear. So we need something else. I we see. need admission form. Uh, right. When you create a CRD, make sure there isn't an API binding by the same yeah. name. And when you and create an way. API binding, make yeah. sure there is not a CRD by the same name. That sounds that sounds like a uh, relatively, oh, it's already a good first issue. Relatively good first issue. Uh, if anyone hearing my voice is interested in that, uh, speak now or on the issue. Um, test flake in ingress lifecycle. Uh, any, has anybody taken any kind of deeper look into this? Mario only says he, he's also seen it. I, guess I um, could yeah. replicate it locally. Oh, okay. Um, but it's definitely something I've seen repeatedly over the last week. Um, and we've had something about the ingress. There's some flake latent there. I don't know what triggers it. Sometimes it manifests, sometimes it doesn't, but we definitely have something to dig into. Um, it'd be really nice to be able to replicate it locally so I could actually see what's going on. But thus far, I've been unable to do so. OK. Um, if anybody is interested in chasing that down, I will uh, send you one high five over the internet. Maybe two, if you, if you do it fairly well. Um, API import does not work when adding the same cluster into multiple workspaces. Yeah, I, I created that one. Yeah. So when when you when you create a workspace and you you create a cluster into that workspace, the API import works correctly. But uh, when you repeat that process in any new uh, workspaces, then it breaks. The API import does not work. There is a place in the code where um, the API importer mm -hmm. is is cached by cluster name. So that explains it, we 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 faced that issue as we created some end-to-end -end test for our project. And we so we had a, a pool of clusters and we we run each end-to-end -end test in separate workspace. So we we faced that as we um use that pool of clusters in in any in, um, test workspace that we have. So it, yeah, um I don't. I don't know. It seems like a legit use case. Yeah. I wonder. 
Uh, isn't this the topic I mentioned earlier that two schemas are different and then wildcards break down? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. It, it, is, it seems like there is a place where, you know, the importer will get cached by custom name. And somehow you, by doing that, you end up in the situation where um, it, the, the logics uh, um, think that this is the same cluster, but this is not the same cluster resource. It's a new cluster in a, a different workspace. Why? Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, and so it just sounds—it sounds like the key should be exactly. workspace yeah. and right. cluster name, and not just cluster. Uh, that's yeah, my understanding. Sure. Yeah, and I think it comes from the fact that uh, long ago we had, you know, opted for the limited case where uh, one physical cluster is only registered in, you know, um, in a single virtual in a single mm -hmm. logical cluster to make it simple. So, but but obviously. Uh, precisely now that we do not create sinkers from KCP, but the other way around, it would really make sense to to, to enable that. I think. Okay, um, if this also seems like a relatively uh, well, relatively small kind of understood bug, uh, if anybody is interested in in picking that up and just you know basically changing the key to something. Uh, more universally unique, and then seeing what, if anything breaks, if if nothing breaks, then we fixed it. We did it, everyone. Uh, and then, yeah, yeah, I, I'd be happy to take it if I mean, you guys can, um, I mean, give give me some, I mean, guideline. I, I can try. Sure, 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 sure. Mm -hmm. uh, let me let me officially. Uh, Person, you as the assigner, yep. assignee of this, uh, and yeah, feel free to you know, reach out on Slack or, or ping me or anyone if, if yep. you have any issues. That's great. Thanks for thanks for finding that, and also thank you for being interested in fixing it. Uh, and finally, one last test test flake. No real follow up. Has anyone else seen this or have any ideas where this might be coming from? Just a note. Um, the test is removed in 755, replaced by API binding. So maybe we fix it this way. <laughs> that's a, maybe that's a it costly large down. hammer for solving this bug, but OK. <laughs> we've, we've fixed it by deleting the test completely. Um, it's replaced, uh, so there's a chance that we have it in the new test as well. Uh, there is a chance we have it in the new test as well? Yeah. But uh, yeah, seeing the error, I might have fixed it. It was a race with the informer. So maybe just, if you're there, just link it to 755. Um, 755. So likely it's fixed, yeah. Uh, I'm going to, oh, I can't comment at this time, huh? There was something you. about GitHub status, maybe. GitHub is down or something. Well, I'm going to assign this to you also in, uh, just so that, yeah. well, I'm going to attempt to assign this to you. Uh, who knows? It might be assigned. It might not be assigned. There's absolutely no way of knowing. Uh, with that, I think we're out of time. Uh, but I, I think we had a, a lot to go through today. So I'm happy we made it. Uh, nice work, team. We'll see you next week. And we'll see you on Slack until then. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.